Hello, welcome to Top Shot. Today we are going to talk to Kiran Bedi, the person whom we have feared, admired from a distance, and we are going to talk to her in person, talk to her as a person whom we are meeting today. So, welcome to this program, Thank Kiran Bedi. In fact, uh, we have been uh, wanting to talk to you for a long time. Then I was wondering whether it's a good time to talk to you when you are in service or out of the service. But then probably the government and you decided together <laughs> that you should not be in the government for too long, so they're out of it. So maybe you can talk to us on many issues that we always talked about and would like to know more about it. Tell me, how come uh, you decided to quit government just like that? Well, uh, it all depends how you look at your own time. How does one value one's own time? The position I was in as Director General of Bureau of Police Research and Development, um, the BPRD was uh, almost, a, almost a backyard assignment such an important institution, had no budget during my time to do enough research, had no national research which had implications on uh, crime prevention and detection, really to its credit, of that national scale, very current, uh, very relevant, and then not made public. Even the researchers which had been there had actually never been made public. In the few, uh, the, uh, the month, year and a half I was there, is the first time we put all the research which had been done with considerable effort on the internet. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, there wasn't enough challenge left where I was and I had to now decide what do I do with my last two years of the Indian Police Service. And I had been overlooked to be the Police Commissioner of the City of Delhi. which and people was, thought that you were the most deserving one. In fact, it's very interesting in, in the police career when if, if, you're, if you are wanted by the people, you're not wanted by the government. In fact, if you're not wanted by the people, you get it because the government wants you. On one hand, you want a citizen, you want police officer close to the citizen. But when citizens want you, people want you, you become unwanted because you're a little too uncomfortable for powers that be. So when I realized that um, uh, a, a career for which I had... I had actually grown to finally fulfill my responsibility and the uh, powers that be thought that I was uh, not the best person, then I might as well do something which is best for me. Yeah. Uh, what's the point marking time for a government bungalow and a government vehicle? If I can find a shelter for myself and I can find a vehicle for myself, why should I tie my two years of very precious life? To doing something for which I need an approval if, at every stage and my two years would just run away getting only approvals to no result almost. So I made a very important choice that I must value my time which is the most precious time uh, in one form or the other and that's why I decided to say bye bye and also make a statement that on one hand you want police reforms, on the other hand you don't want people who can do police reforms. All the time there's a talk about friendly police, crime prevention, police reforms. But when you, have a, when you have individuals who are saying, we'll put the police reforms on the table, to be speaking on the Lok Sabha television, I did make a, uh, make a suggestion. I did tell the Home Minister at that time when I was DGBPRD still saying, uh, sir, if you want, uh, when he said it was not in his power, it was not within his ambit, he can't decide on the police commissionership. He told me on that, that he can't decide. I said, then who can decide, sir? If the Home Minister cannot decide, who will be the police commissioner the of the city? The stop at him, actually. I said, sir, the buck stops at you. He said, no, I'm not the final decider. Well, I said, sir, if you are not the final decider, then my buck stops at you. That means there is, there is nobody. Because I'm not going to go to any political master. Yeah. Because I am a non-political person. And I am a police officer who has to take, uh, go by the rule of law. And it can be a person who is belonging to the ruling party also committing an offense. I, will, I cannot be obliged to any political person for a position which is upholding the rule of law. Yeah. And therefore, sir, if that is it, then I'll have to call it a day. And I did tell my uh, union home minister then that, sir, if I'm denied this opportunity, I will go. Probably they didn't, they thought that I was probably only pulling, I was just making a statement. I did say that. And I also told him very clearly that, um, sir, don't you, I will give you police reforms in Delhi police in months' time. 
few months time i'll implement the judgment of the supreme court the directions of the apex court for few things directions which the delhi police by the, by the way had filed an affidavit in the supreme court to say they are not practical can you believe it i was listening to that uh, uh, judgment on the supreme court i was listening to it where the delhi police had filed an affidavit by the then police commissioner through the legal counsel saying it's not possible to have the security commission or an establishment board or a fixed tenure for the shos which the uh, apex court had said and i told the home minister i said sir i'll give you i'll implement these for you in your leadership we will do it in your leadership and when there will be police reforms and there's a good policing it will credit will go yeah. to you because you the home minister of india yeah. i am a police commissioner but i will do it under your stewardship he said he he didn't say he's a man of very few words and he said uh, kiran um, i uh, i am not the final decider i said sir in that case then i have nobody to go to i'll have to accept it as it is but then i will take decisions for myself um uh, and i did say at that time that then i might move away and that was almost two and a half years earlier i left it uh, it was less than two years but i said it months ago to the government knew that um, i would go so that's why probably they were wondering what do they do what do they do do they do it do they not but i think they couldn't but you'll be surprised to know that while i was in the queue of the police commissionership it's so strange i was being offered to fight a parliamentary election from a constituency yeah. another constituency yeah. i'm sent being sent messages that i could fight a parliamentary constituency from somewhere and i sent a message back on the sms of which i still have a record to say through these emissaries saying why are you offering me parliamentary seat uh, fighting elections when i you know i'm only waiting finally for the police commissionership so on one hand i'm being offered to fight an election from a particular city on the other hand they don't want to me to be the police commissioner of the city of delhi so what are they what are what is the message so my message was very clear i'm only waiting for the one final decision which is my and i'm a strong professional and i love my service i want to serve my service i know policing and i know what to do with delhi delhi policing and i know in such a short time how well we'll turn around the delhi city but on uh, one hand a seat to fight for the parliamentary election on the other hand being denied the police commissionership i don't understand this contradiction at all were they put trying to put me away or what was it what was it i don't know but i didn't fall into the trap it was a trap yeah so you opted out and now you are a free person wanting to oh, really do something that you always believed in doing what are what are the things you have well i want you to know uh, i would love to say this that even while in the service i worked as a free person i worked with the sense of internal freedom i worked by the day i did what the job needed i worked for people uh, most uh, uh, straightforwardly and transparently there was nothing which was which could be hidden or put in the sheets so i enjoyed the same sense of freedom of decision making i used to offer the decision making to the you may accept it but but i will just do what i think the job job demands and i'm closer to the job and it is rule of law it's not um, it's not uh, favors or patronage so the sense of freedom that is what i was losing it was more of a a, a desk bound job which was invisible and nobody was really looking at your if i as a dgbprd was sending messages or uh, passing on uh, uh, circulars they were just paper it was all paperwork all yeah. the time it was nothing but adding to paper i am not there to only add to paper i am there to implement the paper so i said where is the implementation we are only talking about paper but we where is implementation when implement so therefore when i am saying i when you said that uh, do i i get a sense of freedom i work to the sense of freedom all the time i But decided now, with the you sense you have freedom without uniform absolutely so i'm back in public service uniform freedom now you have got un uniform no freedom. i'm back in pub it's like that was a serving in a one way this is public service another yeah. way but i am still in a much larger context in public service which i'm thoroughly enjoying a larger scale of functioning now tell me uh, you just mentioned a very important point that when the government was denying you the job that you thought you really deserved it and you actually it was due to you because it, you yeah. because of your merit it was due only, not even said due to merit i wouldn't say due to me well it was because, a by virtue of seniority and no, second by virtue i understand it but i am just saying so at the time when you are denied that the people of delhi 
we are all the time saying that you should be the person who should be holding that job. Now you think there is so much of disconnect between uh, public opinion on one hand and the decision making of the government on the other. And if it is so, is it the reason why now we are seeing that so much of rift building up between the societies and the government, which is actually breeding this type of discontentment and every time you go for election, in fact, you are seeing that the government in office is losing the position because they don't respond anymore to what people want. So police, in fact, in a way, is actually the interface between people and the government because nobody really meets the prime minister or the home minister or the finance minister on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, you hardly meet them. The only way people can know about the government is through the interaction that he has with the lowest of the police officer or the police constable because he meets them regularly. Now tell me, is this something that government wants to change its image? They must actually make sure that the policing, the police, and the police force as a whole institution is actually made in a way, manner that will respond to people's need, but at the same time, the government will help them to do that job. Is it something that is needed? Well, you would use the word rightly disconnect. There is a true disconnect. There's a disconnect between the senior poli police leadership and the constabulary. Oh. There's a total disconnect. There's a disconnect between the leadership and even the middle level disconnect. There's a disconnect between the politician and the con uh, ordinary citizen as regards policing is concerned because it's so VIP cocooned. They are totally protected, whether it's traffic cleared for them by sirens or security from blasts, while the rest of the rest of the people are tr caught in traffic jams and absolutely insecure for Diwali Melas. And they're always being told, be careful, be careful. And an ordinary citizen loses his livelihood because of these scares. People are losing out. Many people have lost their earnings because of the scares, because they could not sell their wares because of the threat. While they are very cocooned, there is a disconnect. And people who have a connection are not wanted, because that connection is probably considered a monopoly of some people. They think, the, they, think they are connected, but they're not. Yeah. And people who have genuinely a connection are, are, almost, are almost like a, a competition. Threatened. They feel threatened by the fact that Somebody is connected, so he would... So it's almost uh, like a competition. Why are you competing? I, when I say government, let me tell you what is government for me. Yeah. Government is not only a politician. Yeah. The government is also the civil servant. And probably the politician is being taken for a ride by the civil servant. You don't even know this. You've been in the government. There are large bureaucrats working with you, belonging to all kinds of services, including the police. The kind of advice you politicians may get I do not know whether you as senior politicians are able to sift the just and the unjust, fair and the unfair, um, um, the right and the wrong. I'm telling you, actually, sometimes politician becomes is a better person to deal with than the intermediaries between. They are the ones who are invisible. They are the invisible. They are the ones who write all the things on the files. They create the files and then have their way, have their way, and they're not accountable. They're not even known who's doing it. I saw that that layer yeah. between the Home Minister and me. That was a pretty interesting layer. And that layer was actually deciding for the our Home Minister. Home Minister was being fed such a, such a sort of information by which his hands were being tied to take certain decisions. And in any ministry, as you were saying, uh, there could be at the most two politicians, Minister and Minister of State. Maybe Constitution also provides to have a junior minister, uh, deputy minister, but it's uh, two or three people. Yes. But then there are maybe for every one person, there are 10,000 other people Absolutely. who are working in the ministry who actually that's create a that wage, wage between the people. That's a bureaucracy and that's the red tape and that's a civil service. Belongs to all services, but that's considered the st steel frame, the backbone, but that's yeah. not a steel frame at times. And the steel has corroded long time ago. It's, it's, you do not know what it is actually holding you back from progress. Yes. I, I've seen it very closely. And I can tell you what's holding us back. It is this, this layers over layers which are not advising correct. In fact, it is they who are controlling the uh, ground performance. It is they who are deciding who will be at the helm, who will listen to their orders, who will listen to. That is very, very dangerous. And they're not accountable yeah, to the people. Yeah. And when we talk about police reform, what is actually your uh, vision of police reform? What, in short, what do you think 
are the basic key components of the reforms we should The most important police reform in India is the is the selection of the leader of the force. It's like the chief of the army. Okay. It's very important. You select the best person at the, the chief of the army, the whole army is behind you. Yeah. You meddle with the chief of the army. You've had it. The country's had it. The he's country a will have, he's, It's he's a matter a, of time general, that you... Yeah. The matter of time that country will go the other way. Chief of the army being meritoriously selected, non-politically selected, and the, is the best person to be selected to lead the army. And the millions of the army men and women know we've got the best chief. He was the best. Similarly, in the police department, seniority come merit is so critical. And you cannot overlook. If you've reached the level, either either you don't let anybody reach the, who's not fit, don't make that person reach the DGP yeah. level at all. Yeah, exactly. They should be retired should earlier. Be out of, yeah, absolutely. Retire them earlier. Why don't you have a system where if the, it's like the army. You are able to clean, uh, sift and all, reach only the best to the top. Do the same with the IPS. Do the same with the IAS. Do the same with the civil other services. If the person is not making it, retire them. They must go. Why should you keep them hanging around? If you're around? not good as a CP, why should we even ACP? Yes. So, uh, and if you can't trust that person who's at the DGP, you've promoted that person to a director general of police. And now you say, no, 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 no. Yeah. you're not fit for that position. To me, this is this is um, uh, I think a loss of loss of a loss of duty for the whole nation because you groomed a person to reach yeah. the top. That's not the way. So the leadership is one. Leadership is most critical, yeah. and that's where the problem is arising. You, we are not getting non-partisan, uh, the best professional who the leader looks up to, uh, who the rank and file looks up to. Rank and file. When such a leader walks away. People look the other side. They don't want to look him, uh, look at him to salute him. They don't salute him out of out of the heart. They salute him by force, so that if he doesn't salute the police commissioner or the DGP, he'll be punished. So it starts with the leadership. It starts what, with the leader. What you think should it be It starts there. with the leader, selection of the leader, tenure of the leader. Yeah. Selection and tenure of the leader. Yeah. If you don't even give them a tenure, supposing you select the best. Yeah. Well, yes, it happens. You select them, but you never give them a tenure. Yeah. You keep them hanging. Yeah, no, no. You keep them hanging. Always Why? insecure. You cannot have a leader insecure. Yeah. The chief of the army knows now he's the chief of the army. The chief justice of India knows he or she will be there till the tenure is over. Here he doesn't know. Yeah. How long? It says till further orders. It does not say till for another two years. Yeah. So the force is kept hanging. That means you are having ups and downs. And if he's not going along with you, he goes. Yeah. He, so if if your if your leader is shaky, how can you have the rest of the force? And so then that's the leader is all the time spending time more to please his bosses that he, than maybe actually policing that he is supposed to be doing in the streets. Because he's a, he's obliged to somebody else to stay on. Tell me, if you have the best of uh, leader with a very secure tenure, so that protects him and and the person the remains accountable. Yeah. That's yeah. the second is security commission. Yeah. So first is leader. But the leader should not be a dictator yeah. and he cannot just uh, ride roughshod now that he's got a tenure and now he's fine and then he does. No way. He's accountable for every action of his, yeah. which has to be fair, but has then a plan. to also give him the necessary inputs in terms of deciding who should be his, in his team. Can he also then have the right and responsibility again, but rights also to actually pick and choose his team? Why Can not? he give promotions and things like no, that? No, but he can't be arbitrary. There are others now who are going no, no, up with, the rank. With whatever laid down system. But you, sure. unless you give him that freedom yes. of doing that. Because Absolutely. So exactly. You me. think so it's a package that we didn't get to. Exactly. He, it's a package. And then there's non-interference in that package. Yeah. But he has to be accountable to whom? Yeah. To a body yeah. which has the unit, uh, which has the chief minister and the home minister. Or, or the Home Minister of that state is a part of Security Commission. Yeah. So he reports to a Security Commission of which political accountability remains. So you're not taking... But not interference, but accountability. Accountability. Exactly. So you want political accountability definitely because it's a democracy, yes. but so, not interference. Correct. You're so this is what you think should absolutely. be the vision of reform. So we'll continue talking to you and we'll Love discuss you. these issues. We'll take a short break. Don't go away. We are talking to Kiran Bedi about how policing should take place in India, what are her, what is, what are her priorities now after she has retired from the police and we continue talking to her. Don't go back, we'll come back soon. This is Suresh Prabhu waiting for you to come back. Welcome back to Top Shot, a program in which you are talking to Kiran Bedi about 
policing, policy reforms and issues related to that. So you can you are saying about uh, how you feel now being out of office but still when I'm talking to I realize that you really want to do so much more. Do you think sometimes that you're not wearing uniform anymore? Otherwise, if you are wearing that uniform and you are in the thick of the problem, you would have probably addressed the terrorism problem more effectively? Absolutely. You see, terrorism comes from failure at the ground level policing because intelligence is at the ground level. Um, harboring is at the ground level. Uh, development of activities at the ground level. So therefore, and I am very good at ground level policing. My strength of policing has been the beat system. I have done two district assignments and both the district assignments are recalled by people of the area for beat system. My beat officer knew exactly everybody at the beat level. And who was checking it every day? Morning and evening roll calls. We exactly knew which, who was a thief before, who had been arrested for, who is a new tenant, where is a senior citizen, which child is not going to school. Can you believe it? My beat officer knew this in my districts. So it's also intelligence gathering and it's actually working with the people. Correct. These batlas would not have happened, I guarantee you. If our ground policing had been this way, the way I had done this, and I had solid practice about the beat system. By the way, beat system, beat box system, is a part, one of my criterion for the Ramon Maxis Award. They recognize this as one of the reasons for preventive policing and bringing police and public closer. My police beat officer in both the districts knew by heart hundreds of people who had ever been arrested and living in that beat. Oh. That means these Batla houses would have been covered long ago. We would not have had these harboring situations. That means these people would have been on the run. And I can guarantee you if I were the police commissioner, the entire Tihar jail criminals would have come up to say we give up life of crime because they would have been a fair policing. I would have introduced truthful policing, Gandhian system of policing, no lies. Place the truth before the court as it is. We don't have to pad anywhere. We don't have to create any. This is exactly the way I also policed my two districts earlier. I used to tell my investigating officer, go out for all the evidence. But record the evidence as it is, as per the time, as per the date, as per the people. If there is no eyewitness, you will create no eyewitness. Oh. Police officers are witness, leave the onus on the court to trust you or distrust you. The onus is on the court, not on me. I'll not create an eyewitness. Trust me or reject me. So you're not actually convicting somebody even before the courts have done it. Exactly. That's what nowadays we do and that's why we are creating more criminals in the process. And during those two district assignment times, believe me, the courts have started to trust us. And my people, were, these accused were not getting bailed out because they knew a case coming from North Delhi district at that time is going to be true. And I was insisting that it is true. Place the evidence as it is. Let the courts, listen, as it is, our conviction rate is 4 to 5%. Yeah. By speaking the truth also, if we get to 4 to 5%, we are a gainer because now we're being trusted. Yeah. So I told them, I'm not, I'm not a prosecutor. I'm an assembler of evidence. Yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm a placer of evidence before the court. Let the court now see, find out, is the police officer a liar or the criminal a liar? This is what would have, we would have done. That means we would have introduced a whole new concept of policing, a new practice of policing called the Gandhian way of policing. Yeah. So the, why, would the, why would the people not have had trust with us? We would have an avalanche of information. Because people would have trusted us, we would have had information about. And when you have information, when your people's trust, Terrorism cannot happen. So several acts of terrorist activities are preventable Absolutely. if you can actually introduce this concept yes. of going closer to the people, working yes. with the people, yes. and the police should be actually like a pipeline, yes. getting information to the government and providing government information to the people. Absolutely a bridge Yeah. as a part of them. I would have made the beat officer stay in his beat. No. Stay in the beat. The beat officer of the Batlaus would have said, go stay there. You will live there. Tell me what's going on. And then it's, there would have been a narrow of the gap between yeah. the police commissioner at the constable level because we would have met, we would have had beat officer conventions. Yeah. We would have had beat officers talking to each yeah. other. Imagine where does it happen? Yeah. Why can't it happen? These were the new things we would have introduced in, in, the, in Delhi policing. Then traffic management, we would have introduced lots of cameras. If the government wasn't having camera money so soon, though it does, I would have got it sponsored. Let, let different corporate houses sponsor different intersections yeah. and we would have had cameras. That means even the VIP's vehicles would have been prosecuted. Yeah. You do over speeding, you do wrong laning, 
you do wrong parking your vehicle is getting covered in the camera yeah. there is no relaxation yeah. that means we would have had much much better traffic management the way compared to what i see today on the road it is chaos right. i see no enforcement today I see no cop on the road i see not a single constable on the road traffic signals are all overshooting times there nobody checking the timings of the we used to have me, uh, that time uh, electronic timing where it would come to a blinker where it's not needed or it would be reduced timing when there is reduced traffic and it would be changed timing when it's heavy traffic we used to work at electro and these options are available these things are tragically not happening all this is gone so two things would have done you would have cleaned up the ground level and ensured the ground level policing and worked on traffic management so that people do not die on the road get injured i'm scared of being driven even at night because you never know which side you're going to right. be hit from i have noticed for all these months there's not a single one of us on the road who's not violating traffic today by parking or by lane changing or by over speeding or jumping the traffic signal or otherwise believe me there's not that means you have millions of people on the road violating traffic each one of us in one form or the other it's 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 absolutely dangerous now whose job is it we need to inculcate a lot more enforcement fear yeah. and education so we would have had cameras at major intersections so you still feel today that you should have been there to do look at all the issues no it's now should is gone no i know no, but i'm saying all i'm saying is it was a plan which would have worked within I months know. months tell me how come you got uh, so much interested in drug uh, de addiction and issues related to that what how you got tuned into this this goes back to my district assignment where i was always looking for solutions to problems and drug abuse at that time in 1986 was a huge problem and we didn't have treatment centers and it was linked with crime robberies burglaries were happening even rapes were linked with drug abuse and we did not know where to treat them so i started to treat them from my police stations eight police stations were treating uh, becoming eight treatment centers oh. unheard of anywhere in the world where a police station becomes a treatment center we became treatment centers eight police stations in north delhi in 1986 oh. and people flocked that for treatment because they had trust in us and people the crime started to genuinely fall burglaries fell and thefts fell people felt very relieved now there was a time for transfer and people said Kiran Bedi, you can't leave this program like that. So I said, "What do I do?" They said, "Register this as a foundation." Nav Jyoti was then born, and we were doing this under the program of Nav, name of Nav Jyoti. So people assembled, collected, and said, "Register this as a foundation." So we, thirteen police officers who were there at that time, spearheading the program with Mr. Ved Marwa, then as the police, yeah. who was the finest police commissioner we've had, oh. Delhi has had, Sri Ved Marwa. He became the founder president oh. as a police commissioner. i became the founder general secretary and all others became the founders and we founded the foundation since then in 1986 our experience in drug abuse treatment program using homeopathy using yoga and spirituality and family became unique features of any drug abuse treatment program so we went on and on and on uh, and uh, it's now 2008 we have a hospital treatment of our own we have 100 patients at a time under treatment Uh, uh, six months of residential, three months of aftercare, nine months. Families, we are on a wait. They are on a waiting list. We don't have place, a uh, place to give. We are all running on our own. We are still slow in getting government grant. Can you believe it? We are not getting government grant for the last two to three years. Repeatedly requesting for. Yet we are struggling to keep the program alive. So here's a struggle. of keeping the government uh, go, uh, the program alive because people need it but you're doing it all by your own determination and yeah. public support government has crores of rupees in this program yet it is so slow in dispersing whatever little 10% or 8% grant it gives so it's running on the strength of people's demand not because the government wants it that's the tragedy of it and i know how much of resources the government of the social welfare departments are allocated but when it comes to disbursement they are so slow so this is how the drug abuse treatment uh, went on so from police stations we came into our own building japanese embassy helped us build it and a donor an nri donor from america helped me buy the land 